Um, hello again. I uh, actually decided to re-record the audio for this video because, uh, first of all, I didn't really say everything I wanted to and uh, the audio was a little bad. So in this video, I will show you how to find your timer zero, v-count, and v-frame for configuring your parameters on your DS. This step is also called calibration by some people, so uh, if you see that in other guides, this is what they're talking about. Um, you're going to want to park yourself um, near Victory Road, near the Elite Four. There's a very good cave for calibration. Uh, there it is right there. Um, you want to have a Pokemon in your party that has Sweet Scent, and uh, you want to have at least, you know, 20 Dusk Balls. The reason I use Dusk Balls for this is they're very effective inside this cave and uh, the particular method that I use to see my IVs for my game is uh, through the PokeCheck. i uh, post a link to that in the description. It's an online database of your Pokemon. Um, your Pokemon are completely safe. They don't actually have access to your Pokemon, but it's just a way to see what kind of stats they have. So a little basics on what you'll be doing here. Um, every time you start your game, for every month, hour, day, second, minute, your game generates something called a seed, which determines all of the supposedly quote-unquote random events in your game, like which Pokemon you're, you'll encounter, etc. Um, so the way you can manipulate this is changing the clock on your DS to match a particular time, so that you can predict what kind of Pokemon you'll encounter. Every DS is different in that it takes them a different amount of time to boot up the game. So this gives you a little bit of margin of error between the time you actually enter the game and the time the game says or thinks it's being booted up. So by configuring your parameters, you'll learn how soon you have to enter the game in order to have your actual start time and your game start time be the same. So you want to open your DS parameters window and uh, put a time into the time box. It can be any time, you just have to make sure that when you're setting up your time on D your DS, it's the same time as the one you put into the time box. It doesn't have to be today, it doesn't have to be whatever time it is right now, it can be anything. You just have to make sure the two times are the same. Now, my 3DS doesn't display seconds, so um, I have to sync it up with a clock on my desktop. Um, so if you're like me and you don't have a clock, I'll post a link to an online clock that is live updating with seconds. You just have to make sure that if you configure your parameters with this method of telling time, you do it every time. So if you do it this way, you always do it this way. If you do it with a stopwatch, you always do it with a stopwatch. So the time I entered in my parameter search was 1824. So I have my idea sitting here at 1823 and I'm waiting for the clock on my desktop to hit zero zero so that I can sync up my DS with one that has seconds. So, like I said before, the time you enter the game depends on what kind of seed you generate. So, every time you try to hit a seed when you're actually learning to RNG, this is how you do it, by changing the time. And you have to change the time every time you enter the game, otherwise you will hit a different seed. Uh, to people who've been doing this for a while, it seems like common sense that you would change the time every time, but when I first learned this, I didn't really realize I was supposed to change the time every time I entered the game. So this part is all just about kind of waiting, um, patience, and a little bit of timing. Uh, you might not get it the first time, you might not get it the second time. In fact, I would actually repeat this step uh, at least five or six times until you keep getting the same result, and ideally... After a while, you want to start catching exactly the same Pokemon. And you can tell it's exactly the same when you upload it onto PokeCheck. Um, it won't update it as being a different Pokemon. It'll be the same. Now, this part is kind of important. For this white screen and the next screen with the black background and the white text, you don't want to press anything. If you have your hands on any of the buttons, take them off. Because if you press any buttons during this part, it'll mess up which seed you hit. So just advance through the menu with A except when it gets to turning on the C gear, you want to hit B. 
So once you see this screen, you want to start hitting your X button as soon as possible so that you can open your main menu on your Pokemon game as fast as possible. So once you do that, you go to your Pokemon, select your Sweet Center, and use Sweet Scent. This is pretty straightforward. You just catch the first Pokemon you see, and this is why I use Dusk Balls, because they're really effective and they're not wasting my materials. Like, a lot of guides tell you to use 100 rare candies to level up your Pokemon to level 100, so then you can type its stats into an online IV calculator, but that's not really necessary. So by this point, you should already have your uh, DNS settings under your internet settings set to the one on pokecheck.org. I'll post a link to that in the description again if you can't figure it out. Um, once you have your DNS set to this particular one, it'll allow you to sort of fake upload your Pokemon onto their website. It's not really uploading your Pokemon. They don't take your Pokemon. It just sends a little piece of information. When you try to upload it, it'll give you an error. But this allows you to check its IVs and uh, a, a couple more things that you wouldn't be able to find without an AR or some other kind of hacking device. So you want to actually fly to the Pokemon Center that has a uh, upstairs. I kind of forgot that the one at Elite Four doesn't have one. So uh, just use fly and go to whatever town you feel like that has a Pokemon Center with an upstairs. So you're in the GTS and basically what you want to do is deposit the Pokemon that you just caught. Um, you should get an error when you do this, a very specific one. If you don't get this particular error, then you're probably doing it wrong. And uh, you can search for any Pokemon. It doesn't matter since you're not actually completing any trades. So it attempts to send your Pokemon to the Nintendo database, but it can't. So you get this error, 13266. If you get that error, you know you're doing it right. So then once you've done that, you go back to your computer and go to pokecheck.org. And you're going to want to click on the link that says unclaim Pokemon from my IP, not manage my Pokemon, because this is the first time I assume you're using this program. If you've used this before, just click on manage my Pokemon. It'll be the first one on your list. There it is. And there are its IVs. Uh, this is why I do this, because you need to be very precise with the IVs that you enter into the, uh, the parameter searcher. Uh, I actually put 13 instead of 14, but that's okay. I'll fix it. So you have the time and uh, your configuration. I have another video that shows you how to set that up if you don't know how. Um, and then the IVs of the Pokemon that you just caught. Once you have that all put in, you hit the button that says search. Now what this does is it searches for seeds that are around what you typed in. So if you don't get any uh, results that you have the IVs typed in wrong or you have the time on your DS set to the wrong time. It has to be the same that you put into this window. So there's my result. It says uh, 18.24.09, which means that I hit it 9 seconds before the game actually booted up. So there's your timer 0 and your V count, your V frame. Now, I've already calibrated, so you want to make sure you do this a few times so that you make sure you get the same results at least 3 or 4 times, um, and at least the same Pokemon. Uh, at least twice. Once you do that, you know your values for timer zero, V count, and V frame, and you're ready to start RNG. So I just want to thank the creators of Pokecheck and uh, PP RNG because without these programs, I would not be able to RNG. I don't have an AR, I don't have a method of 
cloning my rare candies or my master balls. I don't have a way of checking my IVs other than this. So this has really helped me a lot. And if you're like me and you don't use an ER, this is very possible. Um, just follow the instructions on pokecheck.org and you're good to go. After you've got this set up, you're basically good to go for uh, RNG, for flawless, shiny Pokemon, you name it. Um, if you watch my next video, I show you how to find a shiny, flawless Vulpix.